And if I never make it, then at least I left to go try. 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 Let's get to it. Let's get to it. We're gonna start off with a proper, proper warm up, yeah. Proper warm up, yeah. You think McGregor's gonna fight in December? I don't think so though. I don't. I think that was lost all his discipline. He drinks too much, you know. He used to be really good, bro. But once you get money, that's why a lot of people don't remain successful when they get money. You know, it's hard, bro. That's why people like. Michael Jordan, Floyd Mayweather, Kobe Bryant, like Tom Brady, for them to continue to stay on top, you know, after winning so many championships and making millions of dollars, that's a different type of mindset, bro. And that's the type of mindset we're cultivating here every single day, every single morning, because it's no longer about the money. Like, it's just who you are, you know? Always seeking to improve, always showing up, you know, being disciplined, having that mentality of working harder than everyone. Like, even if I was a, a millionaire, I would still be doing this. I'd still get up this early. I would still come to the gym, do what I do. I still train two, three times a day. That's why I, I decided to start developing that discipline and those habits because when I do become extremely wealthy, I don't want to let that change who I am. I've spent the last almost decade of my life building the discipline and building the person who's going to be able to handle and manage that kind of responsibility and that kind of exposure and, and influence, you know? And obviously it's a process, you don't just change overnight in, in everything, every aspect of your life, you know? It's been a decade of changing all kinds of habits, you know, like my personal life, my spiritual life, my, my relationships, how, how I handle relationships, you know? Uh, being able to remain faithful to my wife, being able to be a good, you know, father and a husband, being an honest man, being an, a man of integrity, being a man of discipline, being a man that is respectable, he's quiet, you know? You don't have to be loud and yell to get your point across, bro. And that's something that people think the louder they talk, the more weight their words hold. But the reality is you, you talk louder because what you say has no value. You know, most people who try to talk louder, it's because that they know what they're saying holds no value. So they feel like they have to scream and yell listen when you speak the truth it doesn't matter whether you scream it or say it directly it's gonna make its point it's gonna get the point across regardless there's a lot of drama that's been going on in youtube lately guys we're gonna talk about it we're gonna talk about it today we're gonna get into it um a lot of drama between wes watson joey stacks and uh, i'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion i know i was a, i was part of wes watson's mastermind uh, second mastermind uh, back in January and uh, I'm gonna give you an honest review on now like uh, almost a year later the whole situation is he a scam artist is it real what is is it a pyramid scheme Ponzi scheme whatever I've been seeing people have all these kinds of questions I'm gonna give it to you straight give it to you raw and then you guys can choose to do with that information what you will but you know I'm not gonna speak negatively on anyone, so if that's what you're looking for, I'm not gonna do that either. Cause I don't condone gossip and I don't condone talking about people behind their back. So that's not what I'm gonna do. What I will do is give you an honest review, give you honest feedback of my experience and you guys can do with that information what you will. So, for those of you who are new or probably don't know, I started following Wes Watson about a year ago. Uh, we'll say two years. Because I, I followed him about two years ago, but I didn't join the program until about a year and a half ago. So anyways, 
joined the program, pretty much did everything he offered, had everything he basically had to offer. I did the weight loss program, the mid-level program. I did the one-month coaching, I did the three-month coaching, and I did the in-person mastermind, right? So there's a lot of drama going on between Joey Stacks and Wes Watson. Joey, if you guys don't know who Joey Stacks is, he used to be a part of Strength Cartel, right? And uh, he recently made a video calling Wes out for being a fraud, for uh, scamming people. So here's the thing. I don't condone either one of these men's behaviors. Okay, I don't condone the way Wes does business sometimes, and I don't condone the way Joey called them out. And, but I'm gonna keep it real with you. I did the mastermind, I did the coaching, I did the program. It's not that Wes is a scammer, because he delivers a product, he delivers the service, right? You pay him money and he delivers you the coaching. However, here's the thing. There have been situations where people get into it with him and he just cancels their, their stuff and doesn't refund them. Okay, I know of at least one person personally that I've actually spoken to. I got the receipts, I got the DMs that he paid Wes $3,000 for coaching and he was trying to get his call scheduled and Wes was kind of like tripping that he was asking, you know, where, when, when are we gonna schedule our first call? Which I get it, like, I get both sides, right? Because one, because when I, when I booked with Wes, I never like, I wasn't like constantly hitting him up. It was just like, okay, let me know when, when our call is and then we'll get on it then. But there are other people who that 3000 is like all they have. So they're obviously, in a state of like fear, like, damn, like, is this guy gonna scam me? Is he gonna scam me? So that thought process causes them to act in a, a needy way or act in a, you know, desperate way. So this person just kept, you know, kind of annoying Wes, like, hey, when are we gonna get on our call? You know, which I understand because like, that's all the money he had left and he was trying to get on his coaching program, right? But from Wes's perspective, it's like, dude, like, we'll get to it when we get to it. Like, you're not the only person that I'm coaching. I have thousands of other people signing up every day. Like, just be patient. But at the end of the day, right, this is why I say he's not a scammer, but he just doesn't do, he's not a good businessman. Regardless of how much money he's making, that's not good customer service, okay? Everybody knows if you run a business, customer service is number one. How Your customer's experience is number one, okay? so. Like the fact that he, instead of telling him like, hey bro, uh, you know, just be patient with me. I have calls booked for the next two weeks. Like there's thousands of people that sign up every day. I promise I'm gonna get to you, da, da, da. Instead of like making him feel comfortable for purchasing his service, he just kind of like cussed him out and been like, hey, like what the, f you know, why are you, uh, you know, constantly like berating me or whatever, like, I don't even want to do business with people like you, da da da. Like that's something like that. I, I I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it was something to that extent, and basically ended up blocking him, taking him off the program, and never refunding him the money. So I, I I don't doubt that that's happened more than once. Okay, this is just one person that I know personally, but I don't doubt that that's happened more than once. I've also seen it happen uh, one other time on a coaching call where he got into it with some guy. Because again, you guys know how Wes talks, so this person that he was speaking to got offended by the way he was speaking to him. And basically, they got into it, started cussing each other out, and Wes just booted him from the program. Obviously, didn't refund him his money, and that was that, right? So, uh, the, the, what Wes teaches is real, okay? It's not fake, it's not a scam. You can make money coaching. I've made money coaching. It's not a scam. You, you, what he's teaching you is how to build a personal brand, how to get in shape, how to build discipline, how to drop devices. You are getting what you pay for in that aspect. Where the service starts to get watered down is when it comes to like the one-on-one -on -one stuff, right? Because even me, me personally, I can't speak for other people, but I paid for one month of coaching, right? 
We only did one call, right? And that was it. And then on top of that, it took forever for me to get onto the business forum or the business like meet. Cause it, when you pay for the, for the, the business coaching, you're supposed to join like a different group for all the other business people that are like on that program. And then like, it, it just took forever for me to get onto that platform. Like I never got the link or whatever, long story, whatever. Eventually I did get into it, but again, I went to the mastermind and then I did another three months of coaching, right? I paid for three months of coaching, 7,500 bucks. I only did one call, okay? Never, and, and uh, like, again, whatever. I, from that one call, I did, I, I got everything that I needed, but if you're saying you're gonna coach someone for three months, I was expecting like, okay, I was expecting him to like, let me know when our next call was, cause I'm not the type of person, I'm like, I'm not gonna be like messaging, you know, I'm not desperate, bro. Like, to me, the 7,500, it's like, I understand you're busy, you're doing your thing. I'm not gonna be like texting you and say, hey, when are we gonna get on our next call? When are we gonna get on our next call? But as a coach myself, like if someone pays me for three months of coaching, I'm gonna let them know, hey, I'll see you next week. Uh, I'm gonna send you the link, you book our next call, da da da. If you're paying for three months of coaching, I expect to get three months of coaching. But instead, I got one call and that was it. And there's a lot of other stuff that's been going on lately that I've been noticing from Wes. No disrespect to the guy. Whatever I'm saying right now, I would tell him in person. Like I, I'm not even disrespecting him. I'm just speaking the facts. It has nothing to do with him as a person. I'm talking about his service, right? The service that he provided me. And that's just what it is, bro. Like I, I paid for three months of coaching. I only got one call and that was it. So at the end of the day, whatever. I, am, I chose to make that investment. I chose to hire him. I feel like I got what I needed to be able to monetize my passion and, and turn coaching into a business, but I didn't get the service that I technically paid for. You know, I paid for three months. I didn't get three months. You know, I got a lot in that one call, but that, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. I paid for three months, you know, so I expect three months. But anyways, long story short. And then on top of that, the, the problem with this is that what you get is a bunch of mini-me's, like a bunch of wannabes that are trying to be just like Wes. Like, you, it's like, it's cringy to see, bro. Like, I've been following, doing it so long. Like, I've been following Wes for a while, but, like, it, I've seen so many people come through the program, and it's kind of sad to see, like, they all sound like copycats bro like very few of them are original you know there are some that are doing their own thing and, and stand out from the rest but for the most part they all end up coming out copycats and they they, they say the same phrases that he says that they, they try to talk the way he talks they try to shoot content the way he does literally the way they post is exactly the same so you know a lot of these things and I get it because I, I was like that too and, you, and you, the whole mindset is like okay, you're trying to get where this person is, so you're gonna do what this person does, right? And that works to a certain extent, but then after a while, it's like people are gonna see through it and they're gonna be like, well, you're just saying everything that this guy is saying. Like, well, what makes you different? Like, why, why should we work with you? So if you're trying to become a coach at some point in the future, you're gonna have to find your own path and your own voice and, and your own way of doing things, you know? Not just keep copying the same blueprint you know what I'm saying I follow these people like on Instagram or YouTube but I, I'm not really like a fan of either huh? I take what what's good and what I can use and I discard what's not and that's what you should do like take what works for you in your life and discard what doesn't so you know uh, that's just the reality of the situation But I'll tell you one thing. If you condone sucker behavior, then you're a sucker too. Which is why you don't see me like repping like Team Watson fit anymore or you don't see me like, you know, repping any of these guys because I don't want to be like any of them, you know? I don't want to represent what any of them represent, you know? I don't like the things that they talk about. I don't like the way that they talk. 
I don't, I, you know, I did at first, but I was still like finding myself. I had found this path, right, that helped me change my life, which is why I say it's not a scam. But there's a lot of other things in the background that I didn't align with and things that I didn't see the purpose for in my life. So I don't do them anymore. You just gotta do the same with you, man. Like people get so caught up in the, like with these, these influencers and they're so scared to speak out. They're like afraid to speak their mind because they don't want to lose that relationship. But listen, integrity over everything, bro. Like truth over everything. Like I don't care how you feel. I don't care how long we've been friends or whatever. If you're doing some sucker stuff, I'm gonna let you know. And not only that, I'm gonna cut you off because I don't condone that kind of behavior. So you either correct it or me and you are no longer gonna be friends. We're no longer gonna have a relationship. And people are too scared to do that. People are so afraid to do that and be like, you know what? You're acting in a certain way I don't align with. I don't respect that kind of behavior. I don't wanna be around people who act that way or do these types of things. So we're no longer gonna be able to be friends or have a relationship, whatever the case. And a lot of people, they get so caught up in admiring, they admire these people so much that they're afraid to be like, oh, you know what? I'm not really gonna follow this person like that no more. I'm not gonna support this behavior. And because they want the clout that that person has and they wanna continue riding the wave. But me, I could care less, bro. There's only one wave I'm riding and that's Christ and that's it, you know, so. That's what I'm about. The only man that I want to admire or aspire to be is like Christ, that's it. I don't care about any influencers. I don't care about anybody online. He's my ultimate example. And um, <clears throat> I'm not here to tell you guys how to live. I'm just here to show how I live. And if y'all choose to follow and be inspired by it, cool. If you don't, cool. But I'm not gonna sit here and insult you for not following the same path as me, for not getting up early like me, for not having you know, the same mindset as me. That's on you guys. I'm just here to show you what's, wor what's worked for me, my life, what's helped me keep my life in order, what's helped me stop drinking, what's helped me lose the weight. And if you guys choose to follow, great. If you guys choose to coach with me, great. If you don't, great. Like Either way, I'm on my path and I'm doing my thing. And I'm, I'm taking care of my family and we're, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing as a man of God. So that's really it, man. Like, I'm not, I'm not into drama. And that's also why, like, people like me usually never blow up because we're not willing to sell ourselves out, you know, and do some crazy stuff on social media for views and likes. Like, I'm not gonna go and act like a clown to get some views, to get subscribers, to do, to get some clout. Like, I'm not that kind of person. And I'm, I refuse to do it. And I haven't done it, which is why, like, my, my growth has always been super slow. Like, that's just what it is. But I'm okay with that. You know, whatever God has planned for me and whatever's meant for me is going to be for me. And whatever's not is not. And I'm cool with that. But yeah, there were also some, a lot of fights this weekend. Mm -hmm. UFC 294, I think it was. We had Islam and uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. And uh, we had Kamar Usman and, and Hamza Chimaev. And some other good fights on the card. Those were the two that I was looking forward to the most. But um, pretty much this, what I expected. I expected Kamza to win. I expected... Uh, Islam to win, but uh, I expected a better fight in the main event. I thought Volk was going to be able to do better, but I also believe that cutting that much weight in that short amount of time, bro, is never a good idea. And especially you're going into against the best in the world and of championship fight, five rounds. 
and I know you're trying to be great, and it's been done before, bro. But you're, you, the odds are not in your favor, right? I, and I get it. it, it it's a great storyline, great opportunity, and sometimes you got to jump on them. But you know that's the risk that you that you you got to take. You know that that's the price you're gonna have to pay if things go wrong, and Volk had to pay that price. Usman and, and Hamza was a good fight. A little, it was more competitive than what I expected. There really wasn't much action, I guess you could say. There, there weren't many exchanges. You know, there, it was a good like wrestling match. That's what it seemed like. It was a good wrestling match, but as far as like striking exchanges, there re really wasn't much. We didn't really get much on the feet, you know, except for a few seconds here and there from Usman. And that's one thing I've noticed that Hamza could potentially get exposed in. He's not a very good striker. Like when it comes to the feet, he he's not a good striker. He gets hit like very often with very basic punches, like straight one twos, jabs. Like they land on him pretty pretty much at at will. So if Hamza ever wants to be a champion at like 185, he's gonna have to mix it up because eventually people will catch on to him, and they, eventually they will be able to find a way to beat him. You know, he's not like Khabib. Khabib, it didn't matter what people did, they were gonna get mauled regardless. Hamza has shown that he has weaknesses. Like, Hamza is not dominant like Khabib was. Khabib was like, there was no question. Dude was not getting up. It was not gonna be a back and forth type of battle. With Hamza, you don't know. With Hamza, there's still that like, he, this guy could get beat. This guy could, um, he, you know, he's almost lost a couple of fights. A lot of people say he lost a fight against Gilbert Burns, but, <clears throat> you know, I'm, all I'm saying is he's not as, as good as they're hyping him to be. Honestly, I think if Kamaru had more time, he, might, he could have probably beat him. I think going in last minute like that, probably mentally, Kamaru didn't think that he had the gas tank. And obviously, he, he, Hamza has a lot of hype behind him. So Kamaru's probably thinking like, oh, like, I got to be careful. I can't go crazy. I can't, I can't gas out because if I gas out, this guy's going to destroy me, da, da 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 So he's not going in with the right mindset already. He's going, he's going in with like, man, I'm on two weeks notice. Have I trained hard enough? Like, am I going to have the gas tank to, to go three rounds with this guy? Like, you know, what if I gas out? What if, he's probably thinking like, the, all those kinds of things, you know? If he would have gone in confident, like, yeah, I had a solid camp, I'm ready, I'm ready to go to war, da da da, he might have won, because it, it was a close close fight. You know? And uh, he probably could have pulled it off, but again, it's all about that confidence, bro. That's why you always gotta stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And then we had boxing, right? I didn't really, I just caught the highlights of the Linares and Catterall fight. Linares is old already, bro. So you guys should have expected him to lose. And pretty much he, he retired right afterwards. But Linares was a beast when he was younger, for sure. Speed, power, dude was a monster. But father time is undefeated. And uh, who else fought this weekend? The Rocha. Oh yeah, yeah. Alexis Rocha and uh, whatever the other guy's name is, Stan, Stan something, whatever. That was, I didn't watch that fight either, but I saw the highlights, you know, and Alexis got dominated. Unfortunately, you know, he, he was supposed to be one of Golden Boy's next top prospects, but this is, I think, his second loss now. And they were not prepared. They were not expecting that. I didn't watch the fight, so I can't really say. But all I can say from the highlights is that he got dominated. Uh, seemed like a pretty one-sided beating. But that's why boxing's not a game, bro. And that's why, that's why I don't want to rush into any fights or anything like that unless my coach says I'm ready because I don't want that to happen to me. And then that... There's nothing wrong with that, bro. It's like, if you're gonna do something, do it right, bro. 
if you're gonna do something, prepare yourself to the best of your ability, especially if you're talking about a fight. You know, you, your your life is on the line, your your pride is on the line, your ego, your last name, like everything is, you're putting everything on the line. I don't think people realize the type of pressure that that puts on somebody. So respect to anybody who, who gets in the ring and the octagon, you know, any one-on-one -on -one sport because, and that's why I love one-on-one -on -one though, be, because of that. It's like win or lose, it's on me. So regardless of the outcome, I just want to go in there knowing I did everything that I possibly could to prepare myself to the best of my ability. And whatever happens, it's going to happen. Whether I win or lose, doesn't matter. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. The only thing that I want to, I'm concerned about is going in there knowing that I did everything I possibly could have to prepare myself to the best of my ability. That's it. As long as I do that, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the outcome. But yeah, man, too many, too many fakes on the gram, bro. Too many fakes on social media. Not enough real people, bro. But it's funny because the real ones usually don't make it because they're too real for the game, you know? The algorithm likes clowns. You know, it rewards that kind of behavior, which makes sense because the world we live in, Satan runs the world. And that's what he wants out there. He wants people acting like clowns and, you know, beefing with each other, doing all these, these kinds of clown behaviors, you know, because it's entertaining for people and it brings views, you know. Obviously, it's got me talking about it, which, whatever. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm the only reason I'm even speaking on it is for those of you who are questioning and wondering and thinking about who's on the right, who's on the wrong. I'm speaking from personal experience, so that's why I gave my two cents. I don't speak on things that I don't know anything about. I only speak on things that I have a personal experience in and can tell you with 100% authenticity, not like because I have some sort of hidden agenda or because I'm trying to look out for this person or that person. Like, nah, bro, what I told you is 100%. That's what it is. Y'all do with it what you may. And that's it. My life is a drama-free zone, bro. I don't deal with drama. I don't get involved in drama. Drama's not for me. The Bible says, live a quiet life. Live a peaceful life. So, you're not gonna see me out here calling out other YouTubers, you know, starting beef with people. It's just not something that you will ever see me do. That's pretty much it. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Like I said, I'm not here to cause drama. I'm not here to talk bad about people behind their backs. Everything that I said is a fact. Everything that I've said was from personal experience. So I'm not here to sway you in one direction or another. I'm not here to lie to you. I'm not here to um, get clout or anything like that regardless. I'm just speaking so for the people 
who are wondering or are on the fence and are, are just looking for somebody to tell them the truth about the situation, the truth about Wes Watson and his programs, because I know when I was first investigating, I also had questions and I wish that there was somebody out there who had just been honest and gave their real feedback, not because they're like admiring Wes that they don't tell you the whole truth, the reality of, of who he is and how he acts and what he does. And I'm just here to give it to you like straight what it is and you can do what you want with that. So like I said, the program in itself is not a scam. He does give you, it's a copy and paste workout, bro. Everybody gets the same workout. It's nothing like crazy advanced, but you do get weekly coaching. You do get um, a workout program. You do get a routine and stuff like that. So that's what I'm saying. It's not a scam. You get a service. Whether that service is good or bad, that's up for you to decide. But all I'm saying is a scam is if you pay for something and you don't get it, right? If you pay for something and they don't deliver on that, which I guess to a certain extent he didn't deliver on like the three-month coaching. But I'm not here to, you know, pick nickel and dime, like whatever, bro. I got what I needed out of it. And, you know, in my opinion, that's a win. So at the end of the day, everything that I learned from Wes I, I have used and will continue to use to generate a, a, an additional source of income co in addition to like my clothing brand, my music, my construction companies and all that. So uh, I can't say it was a scam because I've, I've already made money um, doing it. So it's just a matter of staying on it, continuing on the path, and eventually the investment will pay itself. So do with that information what you will. As far as Joey Stacks, I have nothing against the guy either. Uh, I don't necessarily condone the way he delivered the message, but he is who he is. I respect Joey as well because Joey Stacks is, is a real blue collar. You know, he did his time. He, he did his real time. You know, he, he came out, he reformed himself. You know, he's a fence builder just like me. So, I, you know, I, we have that in common. He's Hispanic like me. Like, so, you know, I, I see him doing a lot of good in his community, a lot of good for his people and his supporters. He doesn't really act or behave in a way that would make me be like, oh, this person's a bad person. You shouldn't watch his videos or anything like that. So I'm not gonna sit here and, and talk down on him either. Me personally, I pray for both of these brothers to truly come to Christ. That's all that matters to me. I don't care how much money they got. I don't care how many followers they got. I don't care what their situations are as far as like business, influence, like clout, whatever. I just pray that they one day get to know God. And you know, that's my, only prayer you know is that that they eventually realize that all this money all this fame is is meaningless it's meaningless without christ at the center of it so regardless of what they you know have now or where they're at in life the bible says pride comes before the fall you know so i'm gonna leave that there so with that being said hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any comments about the coaching programs or anything that you want to know if you have questions about coaching with me and my programs uh, shoot me a, a DM on Instagram, comment below, hit the links in my bio, whatever, and get in contact with me and then we could talk about some coaching. I could coach you in business, life, relationships. I've been through it all. I've had success in all areas. And at the end of the day, you know, we're all here to help each other. And that's what I'm here to do. Just be the light in the world and inspire people to be the best version of themselves. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.